Theaster Gates, Jr. is indeed the Director of Arts and Public Life and a Professor of Visual Arts at the University of Chicago. He is many things to many people, but before all things, he is an artist. Theaster Gates began his art career by making ceramics. Through pots, he made bowls made all sorts of small and delicate objects out of clay. Sometimes he made them by hand, plates and cups and jars. And such objects were, it so happens, also among the very first objects that our species ever produced. And those first objects that humans made out of mud some 20,000 years ago were dedicated first and foremost to the tasks of preservation and protection. They were objects that allowed other activities to flourish in their wake. Because if you could conserve water, if you could shelter food, then you made the first small yet still intrepid steps toward culture itself, toward song, toward poetry, toward architecture, toward art. And it is remarkably fitting that the Astor Gates over the last decade has dedicated his art precisely to the culture building activities of preservation and protection. And it is perhaps even more fitting that his art has grown organically from those first fragile, tiny objects, things that could be trod underfoot, outward toward song, toward poetry, toward architecture, toward an expanded and expansive sense of what art could be, what art should be, perhaps what art will be. This sensibility has led him first toward working with constellations of buildings, then towards working with constellations of neighborhoods, and now finally towards working with constellations of cities, with ongoing art projects in Chicago, St. Louis, Omaha, and Gary. And as his art has become renowned truly around the globe, it is crucial that the emotional energy and the humanizing urgency that nourished those first ceramic objects have not diminished. They have actually, I think, increased and as this emotional energy and this humanizing urgency have increased, so too has the public's appreciation of the Astor Gates art. And now, thanks to him, many more people see that art need not be something that we only see in museums. Art has every right to be as meaningful and vital as preserving and protecting for us today as it was for our ancestors when they first crafted a bowl out of dried mud. So for all these reasons, and for many others, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you today, The Astro Gates. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Can you hear me OK? OK, good. Um, I'm an artist, and this is my artist talk. Many things happen, these Frankie lectures. Lots of expectations around intelligibility. But um, I'm a Virgo. And I'm always kind of preoccupied with space, it's kind of preoccupied. Uh, Jim, thank you for having me. Martha, it's great to see you. Thank you all for coming, friends. Um, does anybody have a copy of the uh, postcard? Can, can I use that for a moment? One should know what one is supposed to talk about. Uh, I need a title for my talk, um, but for now, it's untitled. Um, I thought that I would talk a little bit about things being untitled, uh, and then talk about some projects, and then allow you guys to ask me some questions, maybe talk about a couple more projects, 
and then invite some friends to talk with me. Uh, this is unscripted. And then um, we talk some more together. Um, in grad programs, Masters of Fine Arts, when um, we have this thing called crits. How many people have heard of crits? Crits? Crits is when um, there's a group of students and someone's going to look at their, they're going to evaluate the work. Somebody who's been told that they're really good at art um, is evaluating someone who hasn't been told that yet. And um, <laughs> so then they are criticizing and critiquing uh, role playing, because I found that sometimes student ideas are just good ideas, and sometimes those who have been said to be good at things, their ideas are just not so good sometimes. Uh, but these things, these roles we play. Um, sometimes when you're in the middle of crits, you might say, uh, wow, this is really interesting. Do, does it have a title? And uh, a student might say, well, it's untitled. And I don't know what that means, really. So I have to ask students sometimes, like, is untitled a move? Is that an art move? Like you'd rather not title the thing because you don't want the title to get in the way of the thing that you've made? Is it untitled because um, the thing that you've produced is unnameable? Like it, it, uh, a name would eclipse the value of the thing? Is it possible that it's untitled just because you ain't gave it enough thought to look at the thing that you've made, process what it means, and then uh, declare a name. So when I was asked to give this talk, <laughs> I felt like that person. Um, I thought, what can I do in 40 minutes that would try to surmise a thing that I'm still trying to wrap my head and hands around? Um, that I could say that this is my artist talk. Could have named it something clever, like um, I need a title for my talk, but for now it's untitled. Um, but the title for my talk, this is my title, untitled. Um, I named it that because I think that art is in a place where uh, it's so slippery what art is today, that in fact, there might be need for a kind of genre shift, a, a new title that is uh, something other than art itself. Um, that, that in fact, um, untitled represents the vastness of the possibility of art, not um, my uh, unwillingness or inability to name a talk. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. My dad opened a tire shop on Chicago Avenue in Pulaski. Then he opened a barbecue pit next to the tire shop. Um, then he had a, a, a roofing company. And he would park the tar kettle and all of the tar and the stuff of roofing um, behind the barbecue pit. Um, the more I talk about my dad, the more I realize I'm just like my dad. Um, I roofed with him. And uh, three years ago, uh, he, he had announced to me that he was not going to roof anymore and that I could have all his equipment. As if that, like, that's my inheritance. <laughs> right? Now I'm a grown man now, and I'm like, Dad, I know inheritances. And you know what? A tar kettle ain't very exciting. Um, but because he was getting up in age and I was starting to become a little reflexive about my art practice, I said, Dad, maybe we could do something with this tar kettle. You know, maybe we could, like, do a collaboration. You know, father and son. 
We could be like that. And uh, he said, yeah, let's, let's do something. So my dad, I called him up, and he was serious. You know, he was like, all right, well, let's, let's do this. Uh, and this is where I realized that there's a strand of me that I got from my dad, because then every day after we made that commitment, he would call me and say, hey, when are we going to do this? <laughs> and uh, so I finally set a date. And I was a little nervous about um, creating these wooden panels, laying them out on the ground, and having us do a kind of symbolic version of the thing that he had done for the last 50 years. It was weird to, to imagine that my dad was ready to put himself inside of art and imagine that roo what we, roofing, that we were going to perform roofing on a section uh, of board, and that we would take that little bit of section, and that that would then go on a wall, and that that roofing section, that little thing, would have more value than a year's wage for my dad. So we would talk about this. He would be like, so let me get this straight. <laughs> you want to build some wooden panels with a cleat on the back. And then you want me to mop with you and act like this is roofing. Yeah. And he's saying, we're going to do that. And then you want a you gutter, you want a gravel stop, a drip edge, roofing nails out of copper. You want to go the whole way. Yeah. I said, if we go the whole way and really act like it's roofing, then people will really think it's art. <laughs> this is my studio. Sometimes I make things. Um, we are uh, we're making these bricks by hand. Um, those bricks will turn into a work of art. We'll sell them. And that work of art will help us create a brick manufacturing company. Uh, the brick manufacturing company will make handmade bricks as art. There's a tradition of that. We'll also make walls and pavers, skin for large architectural buildings. As a newly appointed faculty at the University of Chicago, I'll work with partners, Argonne, Fermi. We'll reach out to material science specialists, talk to them about the best ways to fire a brick, what happens if I can't afford the gas, how can I get um, a more dense, uh, 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 less vitri more vitreous uh, ceramic object with lower temperatures because the gas in the city of Chicago is so expensive? Can I talk to someone in the School of Economics about helping me set up a structure that would allow me to hire hundreds of people making handmade bricks? Um, Repaving the south side. Rebuilding the south side one brick at a time. Can I talk to people in the Department of Visual Arts and say, I need a logo? I talk to people in philosophy and say, how do I make sense of myself? 